Good afternoon everybody. How are you? How has your day been? Hey look, welcome back to day three of Lockdown Lives. Uh, we've had a heap of fun. This morning we've done, well in the mornings we've done gluten free amazing breads and doughs and turned them into pizzas and bread rolls and loaves and stuff like that. Three different types. So if you're gluten free go check out the morning videos. And in the afternoon we're doing techniques for glutinous stuff. So we did ravioli day one, day two we did croissants, they were phenomenal. And now we're doing bayo buns today. So I have pre-made the dough. I mean doughs in the Thermomix are so incredibly simple. I'm sure you know that already. I'm sure you don't need me to show you how to follow a step-by-step -step recipe on the screen of how to make the dough for the bayo buns. The recipe I have used today is, I'm just going to show you the recipe, it's called leftover roast bayo buns with hoisin sauce. Now this is what I've used to actually make my bayo bun um, dough. Okay, so that's what I've got there for that. Um, I'm not going to make hoisin sauce because when I did my cook-alongs with you guys, probably back in September, August last year, we made hoisin sauce and I still have some left. So I'm going to use that again. Um, so hoisin sauce is phenomenal though. If you've not tried making it yourself, it's time to give it a go. That recipe, amazing. Okay, absolutely amazing. And even to be able to tame down things like the chili in it, just beautiful. So this is the recipe I used. The dough recipe is purely flour, yeast, baking powder, bicarb soda, um, what else was in there? A pinch of sugar. I didn't put the sugar in. Um, some salt. And then it needs. Oh, no, it comes together. Then it... Oh, some milk. <laughs> Sorry, forgot about that part. You probably want some wet stuff in there. Um, some milk. I didn't have milk, but I've got whey. So I just put my whey in, then some water. And then it comes together and kneads. Then it tells you to actually put it aside in little balls. It says to make 30... Oh, make, maybe making that up doesn't tell you how many. Uh, no, it t tells you to shape it. Okay, sorry, catching up on it. Tells you to put it into something improved. Now, this has actually been proving for probably a long time. It's actually probably overproved, in all honesty, because I just neglected it and got busy on other tasks. So you can see here, see how the dough is extremely stretchy? It's probably now at that overproved stage, but that's okay. We will still use it. Um, I'm just going to see if I've got another bowl scraper. I think I found one in here earlier. There it is. Okay. I'm just going to take this off the mat. And then we're going to make bayo buns. Now these are steamed. So I'm looking forward to showing you how we steam these. Um, they're just beautiful. They're just absolutely amazing. And once you see the technique, you'll, you'll realize how achievable and easy it is. Just get this off. There we go easy enough to get off. Okay, so now what we do with it is it says uh, tip the risen dough out onto a lightly floured surface and go and roll it and divide into twi 12 balls, approximately 30 grams each. So we want 12 balls. The easiest thing I find is make a big square with it. And then we want 12, they said. So that's where I got the 30 from before. Hello, Ruth. Lovely to have you on. Hey, Kelly. Good afternoon. So he said 12, didn't we? So I need to make this into six. So, is that right? Yeah, six. So six portions. I'm sure there's an easier way than little, little pizza wedges, but anyway, that's okay. It's the way I'm going to go today. Now this does have another proving time. Once we've got this in our little discs, we will prove it. But we need to just do a few little techniques first along the way. Now you might notice up here, I've got a Varoma liner ready to go. Now this recipe does call for you to uh, put it on individual sheets of baking paper. However, I am all out of baking paper. So I'm just going to put it on one big chunk today, uh, which is perfectly fine to do so. But it's just, yeah, the way normally they would serve them on one little bit of baking paper each. Today I'm going the big bits. These are in the mix shop. You can get a packet of these. They have the whole version and the non-whole version. I can't find my non-whole version, so we're going for the big one today. So, next step is place on two greased baking trays with enough space to double between, uh, to, enough space between to double size, cover lightly, and leave until doubled in size. So they want you to do another proof. Now we're going to skip that other proof because I want to show you guys what we do with it. So now... We're going to make these into our little circles. Now we could cut them out. 
I have done this two ways before. I have rolled my entire dough out and I have cut them out into circles. All right, so you could do that. You can do that where you get your circles and you cut it out like that. And there we go. Now the thing you want to do is you want to stretch your dough out. So just see if I can get it up first. I need to probably put some flour on my mat. So that's too thick. All right, that width there is too thick for a bayo bun at that point in time. What we need to do is we need to roll it out and you roll it out to make it an oval shape because otherwise you haven't got enough space to actually have a filling in it. So we're going to roll it this way. So roll it towards the ends to make a, an oval. You guys see that on the mat? So now what we want to do is we're going to actually either two things. You could put a little bit of baking paper in the middle. You'll often see people do that. An easier option I find is give it a little bit of oil on some fingers or I've got my little spray bottle from the mix shop. I love my little spray bottle. Just put some oil on it. Give it a good rub around, particularly on one end, but it doesn't matter if you put it on both ends. And now we're going to fold it over on top of itself. So now that we've done that, can you grab me the green towel off the bench, love? We're going to lift up one end. Now, if I'd floured this, this would be happening far easier. I will flower the next one. Thank you. We're going to lift this over on top of the other side. And now, once we get this on top, we're going to let it prove. Look at that. There you go. One bayo bun complete. So we're going to now put this on top of my tray, my Varoma tray, where it's going to steam. Okay, now because of that oil between those two layers, you'll see that it's slippery and slimy. It means they're not going to connect. In that cooking period, it means that it'll actually stay separate from each other. If you don't put either baking paper or some oil between, you'll see that they will start sticking, they'll cook to each other and it makes it a lot harder to use. Now, let's do another one. Let me show you. So first thing I'm doing is I'm making it into a circle because you want a final product of a circle, right? So I'm just kind of pushing the ends in of my triangle till I get a circle. Give it a roll out. Now, depending on how perfect you want it to be, you don't have to use, I used a jar last time, right? Not a jar. This is called cup. You don't have to use a cup. You could get it out to this point here. Depends how perfectionistic you'd like to be. Get it to this point here. Ah, oh, I forgot to put flour under it next time. Okay, give it a spray. Now, obviously, using a jar, you're going to end up with a more consistent outcome. Not a jar, a glass. My goodness. Uh, a more consistent outcome, right? Mine are going to potentially end up different size along the way. There we go. Over the top. Lift it up. Ready to go. Leave a gap in them. They are going to grow in your aroma. And they do need to prove first as well. Let's put a little bit of flour on this time. Let's work with a bit of, a, with a bit of flour. Not too much flour though. You don't want these ending up significantly floury. I'd love to know, those of you watching on, have you had a go at making bayo buns before and what did you think? Now, these do need to prove again for 15 to 20 minutes. Then what's going to happen is we're going to heat up our water in our Thermomix and we're going to follow the steps where it actually just steams them. So it's really super simple. Let's roll this out again. Oh, sometimes I don't love flour. Can you guys see how it's wiggling around on my mat? Sometimes it's amazing and sometimes it does make another level of complication. All right, there we go. Let's get some oil onto it. And let me just then, I'm just going to put this one on my tray and I'm going to step you through the final steps on this recipe so that you are confident to give this a go at your own home. You can see this one has, you know, a decent amount of flour on as compared to the other ones. So just dust it off a bit. Okay, so then it tells us to cut 12 squares of baking paper, approximately 8 centimetres. They are to go underneath the bayo bun. I've got my big one. Roll each dough of... Oh, I can't speak today. Let me guys put the camera on here in case you guys don't understand me. It says, roll each ball of dough into an oval 10 centimetres long and bake on a square of baking paper. Then what does it say? Then fold buns over to create your semicircles. 
place the buns back on the tray, lightly cover and leave to proof for 15, 10 to 15 minutes till risen. Then we heat our water. So you can see here, I've skipped a rising step. I don't think it matters. Okay, so I skipped a rising step. However, I will let these rise before I steam them. They will grow in the steaming process. They'll also grow here. So we'll see that they get about double thickness on the tray. So they're not gonna grow so much. They'll grow a little bit outwards, but they're also gonna grow upwards. Then we've got 1.5 liters of water in the Thermomix. The lid goes on and we heat it for 12 minutes. This is a heating step, it's not a cooking step. All right, so just make sure you're aware of that. And then we put three buns in the Varoma dish and three on the tray. Now, from my experience, you can fit a few more on the tray. You want at least a thumb gap between them because they are gonna fill that space. But you, three is, you can put five on top, okay? Unless yours are massive. Then you put the Varoma on top and they cook for 10 minutes. All right, and then you remove them and you cook the next lot for 10 minutes. You don't need to preheat the water for the next lot because the next lot is then, the water's already hot for you. So then from there, what's it saying next? Ah, and then it's gonna make a final little dressing for you to put your roast meat through. So if you are following this recipe to the T, it's designed to be used with your leftover lamb or chicken or something like that where you actually grab your, uh, you make a sauce. So you put these ingredients in, you put your hoisin sauce in, you put your chicken in and you heat it up. And then that goes into your bayo buns with some uh, cucumber ready to serve. So that's what this last step is. Today, I'm not gonna take you there. You don't have to have that on your bayo buns. You could have a completely vegetarian bayo bun. It would be beautiful with just hoisin sauce and vegetables uh, on there as well. The hoisin sauce, amazing. So let me just take you through one more time how to do this. So I'll just start with a new one for you guys so you see, because triangles tends to be how I start. We put the, the tip of the triangle in and then we just roll all the corners in. You'll end up with kind of a square, but that's okay. Because by the time you pinch in the corners of your square, you've got a circle. Give it a push down with your hands. Got my trusty silicon roller and we just roll it out. As I said, if you want them to be perfect, cut them with your um, glass first or your jar or a cookie cutter, something that's round. That'll give you that sy symmetry to it, which then when you're rolling it will be a bit easier. You can see mine's not perfect. Don't forget the oil. It is important because they will stick together otherwise. Uh, don't say I didn't tell you. <laughs> You'll only make that mistake once. So that's it everybody, that is how simple it is to make bayo buns in your Thermomix, with the dough in your Thermomix. It's really, really simple. So if you ever like to go out and buy them, I would highly suggest giving this recipe a go. It does not disappoint every time I have made it and every time I've done it at a cook-along, because I've done this at a cook-along a few times now, you guys rave about it. You always go, oh my goodness, I didn't know I could do that. So have a go, and when you have a go, tell me what you think. I'd love to know. If you have challenges, I don't think you will, but if you have challenges along the way, call me, message me, send me a PM, a DM, go, Lisa, I need help. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you get the very most out of your Thermomix and help your friends and family get one on the bench too when their time is right. So I'm going to finish rolling these up. Uh, rolling these out more so. Have a fantastic afternoon. Let me know if I can help you in any way with your Thermomix journey. Um, whatever it might be, no question is a crazy question. But take care and I will see you guys on maybe over the weekend, but definitely Monday. Next week, we are hitting the road. So we're not hitting the road Monday or Tuesday. It should be Wednesday lunchtime. So I will be back here on Monday night to show you some dinners and Tuesday night and then Wednesday will be hopefully somewhere else by that stage. So I look forward to showing you guys that journey. Um, I am just about to launch a blog over on my website so keep an eye out over there those of you who follow me over there tmxingadventures.com.au like bmxing but with a t okay if you put in tmxing adventures.com.au Keep an eye out over there. The blog is about to go live soon, telling you about 
uh, how we pack, how we get organized, what's in our pantry, our fridge, our freezer, uh, our meals on the road, all that stuff. And then along the way, I'll document where we go, what we do, who we visit, um, the amazing local produ produce we buy and use. And I'd love to share that journey with you guys if you're interested. So if you do know anyone who's out and about uh, traveling at the moment, by all means, uh, tag them in, show them the website so that they can learn how easy life can be when you take a Thermomix on the road with you. Because it really does change what you want to do and what you can do out and about. All right, guys, take care and I will see you on Monday at the latest. Bye for now.